Welcome to Toyota Time with Timmy the Toolman and Sean and special returning guest Garrett. Today we're going to show you how to do a backup camera relocation for your 5th gen 4Runner. If you get an aftermarket bumper that has either a single swing out or dual swing outs, that swing out is going to block your backup camera that's currently under the Toyota 4Runner bezel on the rear hatch. We're gonna show you how to relocate the camera to either your single swing out or one of your dual swing outs and run the wiring underneath the rig into the cargo area, along the driver's side of the cargo area, through the headliner, through a grommet, into the rear hatch, and then finally to the wiring harness that the camera plugs into. It's a fairly involved job. It takes a while to run all that wiring but it's not really that hard. It's just time consuming. There are some helpful tools that you'll see us using in the video and I'll put links to all those tools in the video description in case you'd like to buy those also. As a reference for this job, we use this video that was done by this couple that has a YouTube channel. It's called Overland Wanderlust. They did a nice job of doing their own video and it was a nice resource for us. We wanna thank them for doing the legwork for us so it was pretty clear cut what we had to do for our install. I'll put a link in the video description to their video and then you might want to consider subscribing to their channel because they do have a lot of videos for 5th gen foreigners because they own one. With all that said, let's get started with this job. So now we're going to work on getting the backup camera relocated. The camera is currently right here, right underneath the R of the forerunner symbol. When this is closed, you're not gonna see anything. The idea with this relocation kit is the camera is gonna go right here on the driver's side swing out. So how do we do that? Well, we gotta open this up and we have to take this panel down to where we can get access to the camera. So the wiring that goes to the camera and runs to the screen that you can see what you're doing while you're driving, we're gonna tap into that wiring and then we're gonna run the wiring towards the passenger side, through here, and then we're gonna bring it this way and then come out through this grommet hole. We're gonna go through this seam accordion grommet into here. Through here, we could pull the headliner down and we're gonna run the wire through this area and then tuck behind this trim right here. So we're gonna pull it back enough to where we can run it down through here. It's gonna run right behind the tail light. Underneath the rig, there's a couple plugs that we can pull out and use those as an area to where we can run the wire underneath the rig and then it's gonna come out from underneath the rig, go up here, run it through here, run it through here, up to the, through the top, through these gaps here, and then right to the camera. So we've got our work cut out for us to run all that wiring through all those spots. The first thing we're gonna do is take this little cover for the grab handle. So it has a, like a, a little slot that lets you know this is a good place to pry. So I'm just getting a little screwdriver in here, prying back and pulling this little plug out. Now you can see that there's a 10 millimeter bolt right here and I'm gonna take that 10 millimeter bolt out. So I'm just using a short extension with a 10 millimeter short socket and I'm gonna back this sucker up. Okay, so the grab handle's out. We're gonna take the plastic door lights off. I'm gonna use this skinny plastic tool that's part of a trim removal tool set. If you didn't have something like this, you can use a thin screwdriver. So there's a metal clip behind here and you're just pushing in to compress the clip in and then you could pull down. See this right here? This is what you're getting on to push in so you could pop this out. So now we have to disconnect the electrical connector. It's got a little push tab right here. Push it in and pull back. There we go, finally. So we have to do the same with the other side. There's another one that mirrors the other side on the driver's side. So now that we have the grab handle hook off and the two lights disconnected. On the passenger side, there's a little gap here and they provide that as the starting point to start prying this downward. 
So it just held in with all these plastic clips. Again, utilize one of the tools from my trim removal tool set. I'm gonna pull down with one, get another one started in, and it's supposed to pop out a little bit. Get this more sturdy one in. There we go, finally. You see the clips that you're overcoming right here? So now that I finally got a little bit of real estate here, I'm gonna come over and start pulling these out. Still utilizing similar tool. All the clips are out. I'll have to say I was prying with quite a bit of force. It hooks in in the back side, so you're supposed to push it this way and then it falls out. So you can see where it hooks in on the back here. Now we have this whole cover off to where now we can get access to the backup camera. So now that we have this cover off, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this silver plate off. It's held on by three 10 millimeter bolts. Two here and then one over here. I'm just gonna zip them off with my little cordless Milwaukee. So there's a plastic tab here near the edge of the door and then there's another one right here. Let me try to tap it with my hammer. There we go. I'm gonna disconnect these wires so you have this, whatever this module is, this Denzel module. I'm gonna undo these electrical connections and undo this one too. Okay, now that thing just popped out, so that's good. So I suppose we could just leave this hanging here for now. So next we have to get this plastic protector. This is like a weatherproofing to keep the electrical components from getting any moisture in them. So to get this off, it's held on by this kind of sticky black goop. And if you pull it back a little bit and then just get in here with the utility blade, you can start to just cut it loose. You might be inclined to go really fast with this, but take your time and just work your way around getting it really clean to keep this intact and to keep most of the black stuff on the actual plastic if you can. I'm gonna work my way around the whole plastic piece and get it off. So the next things we're gonna remove is the locking mechanism right here. This is where you stick your key in. And then there's a 10 millimeter bolt over here that holds the Toyota 4Runner plastic emblem on the back of the rig. You have another one here that also holds it on. You have this one, and then you have another one in here. If you could see it, it's right in there. And to access that one, we're gonna remove this rubber plug so we can get up right through here with the long extension. So I'm gonna start off by removing the two 10 millimeter nuts to get the locking mechanism off. And this thing should just pull out like so. We'll just let that dangle there. I'm gonna go for this upper right one that holds the emblem on. I'm gonna go for the next one. I'm gonna pull this plug out. I'm just gonna get a longer extension and get up in here. Now we're gonna disconnect some electrical connectors. We're gonna disconnect this one right here. So you have a push tab right here. I'm gonna push in with my left thumb and then pull back on the male connector with my right hand. So we got this one disconnected. This one right here has a push tab on the right side. I'm gonna push it in with my right thumb and then pull back with my left hand on the other side. So this one's disconnected now. So the next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this passenger side speaker because with this speaker out of the way, it's gonna enable us to run the wiring that we have to run from the original camera connection all the way through the hatch like we talked about earlier. So it's held on by all these 10 millimeter bolts and a couple plastic clips. So I'm just gonna start zipping these out with my Milwaukee. Now there is 
some other ones here, but those just attach the speaker to the metal installation plate or whatever you want to call it. So you don't have to remove the ones for the speaker, just the ones on the outside edge. Now we have these plastic clips that we have to deal with. I'm going to see if I'm just going to be able to pry these out. So there's one. Now I'm going to go for the back one here. And there's the other one. There's a, a wire harness clip that clips in. So we're going to go on the opposite side. So you just have tabs on either side and you got to compress them in and get the clip out. There we go. And then you could have started with this. It might have been better not to pull on the electrical connector, but press in on a little tab and then pull back and get the electrical connector. Now we have the speaker totally free. So now we're going to pull the hatch down so we can pull the plastic Toyota emblem off. And it probably wouldn't be good if this thing ends up latching. So just put something over the locking mechanism. We're just going to use this glove so it can't lock. We're going to pull this down and then we're going to pull back on this. Just try to do it evenly as possible. It seems like if you kind of push up a little bit with your hands and pull back, it helps the studs clear. There's supposedly a plastic clip behind here and it's hanging us up. So I'm gonna grab one of my trim removal tools and pry in from maybe either side and try to pop it off. So I'm gonna start with my slim one first. Get my bigger one in. Trying to pull straight backwards. This ain't no joke, this is on there tight. It broke. So we eventually got it, but we broke this upper one. Hopefully you're gonna learn from our mistake. So it seems like this clip holds super tight straight back. So I can pull on this with a lot of force with my fingers and I can't get it to budge. And that's basically the way we were doing it. We were trying to pry it straight back. But if you just rotate this up a little bit, then it wants to pop out. Pulling straight back is not the right way. You would probably want to clear the back ones first and then rotate it up to pop out the top one. We're either going to be trying to glue this back in position or he's going to have to get another one of these Toyota 4Runner things, which I probably Toyota's going to charge a million bucks for. We still have to do a few other things to get this Toyota emblem off the back hatch. So we have an electrical connector here you push on the tab once you got it started then you could pull it back and you could disconnect that now you have this other wiring that goes through here that goes to the driver's side license plate light there's a little plastic keeper here and we want to undo it from the wiring there's a tab on the inside right here that's going to be hard to see i'm pushing it with my finger and pulling up and then the same thing with the other one i'm pushing with my finger and pulling up so now we can lift this up enough to where we can free the wire of here, pull it out of its little keepers here. There's this electrical plug that plugs in right here. And I just got in with the little screwdriver and pushed these tabs in so I could free this one. Now we have to get both of the license plate lights unscrewed. So I'm just gonna use a Phillips head screwdriver and get those out. And then we can finally pull this thing off. So I'm just using a Phillips head screwdriver and I'm taking out these little screws. A JIS screwdriver would probably be better. Hindsight's 2020, right? So probably would have been good to get these screws out first so the whole thing isn't moving on you. We're gonna do the same with the other side. So now with both of the lights loose, we can work these out of here. That one's free. This one's free. And look, it's free, free. Unfortunately, we broke the damn thing. Oh well. So now we're finally ready to take the camera off. Put a mark to where you know which is the top and which is the bottom. So Garrett just used the black Sharpie. It's kind of hard to see because it's black on black, but we can see it. He put a little T here to designate the top. And so now we're gonna take off these two 10 millimeter bolts to take the camera off. So once you get the bolts out, flip your hatch back up, and then you can see you have these plastic clips that you have to push in. So I'm gonna try to do it with my hand, maybe. 
Maybe not. Yeah, I'll try it with the needle nose pliers. Gonna switch to a screwdriver. The needle nose pliers wasn't getting it. Kinda got one side going, and then try to get the back side. There we go. I got one out. I'm gonna try the needle nose pliers again. There we go. Use whatever technique. It seemed like the needle nose pliers worked on one, and the screwdriver trick worked on the other. You just gotta compress both of those wings on the white clips and push it out. Be careful. You don't want the camera to go flying out, so I have it loose. I'm gonna bring the hatch down. You can see these plastic clips that we just got done removing. This thing pulls out. So you can get a better eye at the little wings that you have to compress on opposing sides so the sucker will fit through the hatch. So now we have the camera off, but all we want is this piece. We don't want this whole plastic housing. There's two tiny little Phillips head screws or JIS screws in here. One on this side and then one down in there. So I'm just using this tiny screwdriver. You could probably get one like this out of one of those mini screwdriver kits. Pick one that fits the head really nicely and then just unscrew it. Once you have the two Phillips screws out, you still have to disconnect this connector so you could slide the camera off because you see the connector stopping it from coming out. Right on the connector here, there's a little push tab. I'm just using this plastic tool. It's a little hard just with your fingers, but you're gonna see it pop in. See how it's rotating like that? So it has to go in pretty deep and then you can pull back and free it like that. So now we have our camera free and you can see this little nub right here. That's where the electrical connector was hooking on. So you have to lift it up enough to where you can pull back. So here's the bracket that C4 has for the camera relocation and we're gonna plug our camera into it. Using our mark that let us know which one's top. The bracket's gonna go on the bumper like this, so this will be the top. It has this rubber grommet that we took along with it. it. Makes a nice seal with the new bracket. So we're sliding it on, filling the pins engage, and then flipping it over. We're gonna get our screws in these opposing corners, right here, and then one on the back side. The other two holes are where the little pins are. Two holes for screws, and two holes for the plastic pins on the camera. So we grab our little Phillips screws and we slide them in. And then we grab our same little screwdriver and get one started. That one started, I'm gonna get the other one started in the back. Okay, those are nice and tight. And now we have the camera attached to the bracket. So this connector right here goes between the camera and then the wiring harness in the hatch right here. So in order to reroute the wiring to the camera that's gonna be on the driver's side swing out all the way through here, along here, and all the way around, we have to extend this. So this side right here is gonna plug into here. In between the camera on the driver's side swing out and this one that's going into the harness, we're gonna cut this and we're then gonna make an extension to join these up, to do the whole route through the hatch towards the driver's side and to this driver's side swing out. So I'm just gonna cut back the sheath a little bit with a little pair of dikes. Okay, now I'm just gonna trim the rest of this off. So I'm gonna cut somewhere in the middle here of all these wires to give us room to put butt connectors we have to strip all these wires and then get the appropriate size butt connectors. The supplied wiring, right now we have black and red, so we can hook those up, that makes sense. And then we'll connect the green wire to the white, and then we'll connect the orange wire to the brown. And we'll do the same with the other side. So we're gonna start stripping wires. We just did a check and they're 20 gauge wires. I have this nice wire stripper from Klein Tools. You just slip it into the number 20, you get it connected to about where you want it to strip, and then you just squeeze and it strips the wires for you. We're gonna do the same with the next two wires and then for the plug that we're gonna connect it to. On the actual plug side that we pulled off the rig, 
These are actually even smaller than a 20. These seem to be a 22. So you have to have some pretty fine wire strippers. So now we have all the wire stripped and now we're gonna put buck connectors. Not all buck connectors are created equal. So I like these types. They are a shrink buck connector. You stick the wires in, you crimp it on each side and then you take a heat gun and you heat it up and it shrinks it onto the wire creating a nice leak proof seal. There's actually an adhesive on the inside of here that heats up and just basically locks onto the sheath of the wire. The kit does come with its own little connectors, but we're choosing to use our own. So you slide one into the buck connector and then you have to crimp it. I have this crimping set. It's pretty nice. It has all these different connections for different types of connectors. I'll put a link in the video description of this kit, but these jaws right here are meant for shrink buck connectors. It actually tells you which size buck connector each little indentation is for, so it takes the guesswork out of it. So we're gonna be using this front one because it's for 18 to 22 gauge connectors, which is what this pink one is. So you just grab it into the jaws, you squeeze down, it ratchets, let go, and then now it's connected. And we're gonna do the same with the other side. Twist the ends, get a nice tight wrap, put it in, and then crimp down. And then now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our heat gun and we're gonna heat this up and get these ends to shrink. With wires this fine, it's really easy to overdo the heat and actually melt off the plastic sheathing. So for the wires that you're not currently working on, pull them out of the way to where you're just applying heat on the one bunk connector. If you're not careful with the heat and you get it going over to the edge, you'll notice that you'll actually burn off the plastic sheathing and we don't want to do that. I'm going to try to concentrate the heat towards the center and slowly work it around shrinking these ends and paying attention that I'm not burning off the plastic sheathing on the wire. I'm utilizing my heat gun and it has an adjustable temperature setting so you can adjust to how hot you want it. This actually has an extender to where you can concentrate the heat in a smaller area You can see now that the end has shrunk down and basically glued itself to the sheath. And that's how we're gonna do this whole wiring harness. Finally got all these butt connectors connected. You can see that they're nicely shrunk around the sheaths, making a weatherproof seal to where no moisture can get in because this connection is gonna be on the back of the bumper. We did go black to black, red to red, and then we connected the brown connector on the OEM connector side to the orange connector on our wire extender, white on the OEM connector side to green on the wire extension. We're gonna plug this into the camera and then start feeding this wire up through all the areas we need to get it. Now, even though these connectors are weatherproof, we're still just gonna protect it a little further and just put some electrical tape around it. And then I'm just gonna go back one more time We got to get the camera connected to the driver's side of the swing out. We're gonna utilize some carriage bolts and then some washers and flange nuts. So I'm gonna take the wire, feed it through the swing out first, connect it, and then we're gonna get our carriage bolt in from the front and then a washer and flange nut on the back side. These flange nuts are a half inch. I'm just using a 3 8 ratchet with a short extension and a half inch socket to tighten them up. Okay, those are both tight. So now we're gonna start feeding the wire through its path. Because we're gonna use a split wire loom, we're gonna put it through here to where we can fit that wire loom through. There is little slots right here that you could just put the wires through, but since we wanna use the split wire loom, we need more room for that. So we're gonna feed it through here, feed it through this one, and then it has these other little tabs here for wiring. So we're gonna run it through this one. And then our plan is just to have the split wire loom resting on top of here and we'll zip tie it in place right here. So we're not gonna run it through there, but the wire is gonna be resting there. We're gonna get this pulled all the way through and then now we have to go through here and under the rig 
and come up through some plugs that we're going to show you. So here's what we have so far. We ran the wire through the areas that we showed you and then we decided to start getting the split wire loom. And they call it split wire loom because it's split. You can open it up and tuck the wires in there. We ran it from the camera. All the butt connectors are right here. So we decided to disconnect the electrical connection from the camera, wrap it with electrical tape just to make this more protected. Ran it through here, ran it through this one, through this little welded keeper, and then zip tied it here and here. Got a longer zip tie and zip tied it around this driver's side bracket. And then now this trails and goes underneath the rig. So this is one of two plugs that we're gonna have the wires running through. This is the first plug that is exposed to the dirt from underneath the vehicle. And then there's an interior plug that we're gonna go through also. So in order to feed the wires, I'm just gonna make a little X in this to feed the wires through. So you just use a utility blade and don't put it through your finger. So this way we can push the wires through, but we're really not taking out any material and it's gonna have more of a weatherproof seal by just making an X instead of cutting a hole. So the wires are gonna come through from this direction. We gotta feed them through here and then just pull them all the way through like so. And then after we get this all the way through, we're gonna have to do the same with the other grommet and pull it through there. We took the hatch off that houses the jack equipment. We're gonna take off this one right here that gives us access to behind the tail light. And then we wanna pull this piece out a little bit in order to get it away so we can have room to work because the wires are gonna be coming up from underneath here and through here. Another thing that we have to disconnect is this tie down. We want to lift up on this and then take a 10 millimeter socket, take this tie down hook out. So I'm just gonna use a little shorty ratchet and a 10 millimeter deep socket and I'm gonna zip this out. Okay, so this is out of our way. So this trim piece right here on the back edge goes over this trim piece that we want to pull up a little bit to get access to run the wires. So you get underneath here with a trim removal tool and you pop up. If you pry up first here and then you could pry these two pieces apart by getting underneath here with something, the trim removal kit or maybe a screwdriver. And so now this is totally free from this side panel. Pull back using this access hatch to the back of the tail light. We can pull out a little bit and then now we have more room to work. So down in here, this is one of the plugs that we're gonna run the wires through. The other one was the one I just showed you that I removed from underneath the vehicle. I'm gonna pry this one up from underneath and I'll push it out. So Garrett's gonna film here and you'll see me push this sucker up. So now I popped it up from underneath and then I'll grab it from up top. And so here's the other one. So we're now underneath the rig. We're on the driver's side. This is the rear body mount. We've got our split wire loom and we have our first plug that we're going through underneath the rig. We're gonna wrap it to the outside of the body mount. So this is the hole for this grommet right here. So we feed our wire through, have it go through the second grommet and I'm gonna go up above and start pulling it all the way through. I ran the split wire loom behind this bracket that you could see I have two zip ties holding the split wire loom and then it goes up through that grommet above that bracket and now we're going to go up above and we're going to work the wire through the second grommet and then put that grommet in place so now we're going to run the wire through the second plug it's going to plug in like this so we have to come in from the back side push the wires through again i cut a little x in here i'm just going to pull it all the way through and then we have to pull this thing back so then we have to slide it down and then get the grommet pushed back into its spot. So you can see now it's going through the second grommet and then now we have to start feeding this wire up above and it's gonna go right through this pathway. So we're choosing to route it behind these plastic clips. The idea is that when we put the body panels back in place, we don't wanna be crimping any wires. So just pay attention to the way you're routing it and make sure that you're not gonna 
be crimping it anywhere. We have to pull this one back and we'll work the wire through here. And we're just gonna work it all the way through to the top here. So by prying with the tool, I was able to pull this whole panel out. We have to pull the headliner down now and figure out where we're gonna route it. And it looks like it will be good just routing it right along this edge. Tuck it up here and then just use my tool to keep on feeding it through. And you get the idea that we're gonna work our way towards the center. So now we got the wires this far. We're gonna route them through this rubber grommet and go to the right. We can pull the rubber grommet up here and we're gonna pull it out of here. We now somehow have to get this through. I have some baling wire and I'm gonna see if I can feed baling wire through here, out here, to where we can pull the wires through. So what we did with the piece of baling wire is we painstakingly fed it through this rubber grommet and then fed it through the hole here and then out underneath the headliner. Now what we have to do is we have to tape this onto the end of it so we can draw it through that grommet and make it out that direction. So we picked up another good tip from the couple who did this install before us. We're gonna put a little dielectric grease on here to help it slide through the grommet. Just gonna lubricate this a little bit. Maybe put a little bit even on the baling wire. Pulling the baling wire through and drawing the wires up. So it's made it to the grommet. And voila! I think the dielectric grease was a very smart idea. So now we're gonna pull it all the way through here. So we now have the wires ran all the way through this grommet. And then now we have to feed the wires internally and we're gonna go for this next hole right here. Fed the baling wire through here. We fished it through here, saw the end pop through here, grabbed the pair of needle nose pliers and grabbed the baling wire. Now we're just gonna work it this direction, pulling the wires through. And now we'll go ahead and just put this grommet in place because we don't need it open anymore. So now the next run we're gonna do is we're gonna run it all the way towards this area where the speaker is. We're gonna take the end of our bailing wire and then go fishing. This wire run from this corner back to the speaker area was the hardest run that we had to do. It is a real test of patience because we worked the baling wire this direction and we kept on hitting obstructions over and over and over again. And then at one point we were thinking of getting something a little stiffer like an old coat hanger, but then we finally got it. I think this took us about a half an hour to finally figure it out. I was running the baling wire through this way and then Garrett had his hand in this area reaching in trying to feel for the wire and he finally felt it and we got the wire through. In our excitement of actually getting it through, we forgot the film that we actually got it through because it was such a hard thing to do. Just know once you get the wires to here, you're probably gonna find that fishing it through this area towards the speaker in the hatch is gonna be your most difficult run. If you keep at it, you'll finally get it. And maybe try something stiffer like a coat hanger and maybe you'll have a little bit easier time than us. So you can see that we have it zip tied to this existing wiring harness. We wanna have it zip tied high into another harness because the rear window is gonna be coming down through here and we don't want the wires to be in the path of the glass. As you can see, if you follow along, we have it zip tied all along there. Now we've gotten to the point where we're gonna plug it back into its connector. We again did shrink buck connectors, just like on the opposite side, we went brown to orange, white went to green, red went to red, and black went to black. So over the butt connectors, we decided to wrap it with some electrical tape just to hold all the butt connectors together. And then now we're gonna snap this back in to the connector. And 
We gave ourselves a little extra to work with. I wanted the wires hanging down at a length that would allow me to do the butt connectors easier instead of trying to get it to the exact length and try to do everything inside there. It'd be a nightmare. So now what we're gonna do is just fold up the excess wires and then zip tie it up out of the way. Now that we have all the wiring done, we gotta get this thing all back together. So the last thing we took out is these two little plastic clips that screws screw in to hold the original housing for the backup camera. So we're just gonna pop these in. Now that we don't have the camera anymore for the housing, C4 provides this little plastic plug. So we're gonna install that into the housing, plug this in, and so now it just creates it to where nothing could get in there. And then we'll tighten them up with the 10 millimeter. We have the housing for the camera back connected. Now we have to get the Forerunner Valance back connected. So remember we broke this? We used some Gorilla Glue and hopefully it's gonna hold for us. So we gotta pop these lights back in. And we gotta get the other one. Okay, now we gotta get our little screws back in. So get your screws started. We're gonna do the same with the other side and tighten them up. We have everything back connected. Make sure that you connect up this connector here. We ran this wire underneath this clip and we have everything ready to go. So this is just giving you another look at how everything should go back together. So we're gonna rotate this into position, lining up all the bowl holes. And also paying attention to this upper one because we don't wanna break it. Hey, it's back in. So you can see we've got everything back together, the little plug for the camera. And then now we're gonna get everything back connected underneath. So we're gonna put our key lock back in place. Luckily for us, Toyota used all the same fasteners for all this, so it's gonna be pretty easy. We're just gonna get the two for the locking mechanism and then all the other ones for the Toyota 4Runner Valance. So now we're gonna get our speaker back into the hatch and then we're just gonna pop these clips in. Now we can get all the other bolts in. So it's just these ones that go into these green plastic clips and we're gonna get all these started. These are all 10 millimeters, so I'm just gonna cinch these up with my little ratchet. Okay, those are all cinched up. So we wanna plug the electrical connector in back to the speaker, snapped in. You have this little wiring harness and it plugged in right here so we're going to pop that back in now we're going to get that plastic visqueen or whatever you want to call it with the tar on the outside we're going to get that back in position so we got this back connected and what we did is we started in one corner matching up the black sticky goop on the hatch with the plastic and then just slowly worked our way around you really don't need to actually stretch the plastic. Just start pushing it on and getting it connected where it was before. Because if you stretch it, then when you get to the end, you might notice that you have some bunched up material. So you don't need to stretch it. Just gently put it in place. We had to do it twice to get it right. So now we've got it back in position. Now we're gonna get this back connected. So I'm gonna first slide it in this one clip because we didn't pull this plastic clip out. There we go. And then now I'm gonna get one of these 10 millimeter bolts started. On the opposite side, there's another white plastic clip. I'm gonna snap that in. Now I can get the rest of them started. Got another 10 millimeter bolt there, another one right here. And we're just gonna cinch these up with the 10 millimeter socket. Don't get overzealous tightening these because these are just going into a plastic clip. You could easily strip these out. Be gentle with them. All right, so this is back connected. We gotta plug our connectors back in. Toyota does us a favor and all the connectors are different sizes. So this one snaps into here. This one goes into here. And then this one pops into here. 
Now they're all connected. So if you followed our lead and took out plugs in order to facilitate running the wires, make sure that you get all your plugs back in. So we took this one out. We even popped this one out at one point to get a better look. We popped these out, we popped this one out. So just make sure all your plugs are back in. And then now we're ready to get the cover back in position. I'm gonna just lean back and I'm gonna hook this in. It hooks in right behind here. So I'm gonna lift it up in place. Once you have it hooked, it's a little bit easier if somebody's helping you pulling it down. I'm not that tall. If I was taller, it'd be easier, but I'm kind of back bending and fitting it in and making sure that the connectors for the lights aren't captured anywhere or hidden it behind there. So now we're going to transition back over to here and then you have your white clips here and they plug into the hole. So we're going to rotate this up and this is where you have to be careful not to break any of them. There we go. Now we're gonna get our lights back connected. So you just gotta get your light connected back to the connector. You slide it in, it clips, and voila. And then you feed it back up in here. You have this metal tab, so have this side going last. Push it in, and that's it. We're gonna do the same with the other side. Snap it in position. This side goes in last, feed it up in there. Snap it in place. So I have my 10 millimeter bolt going through the grab handle and it goes in up like this. Now I'm just gonna cinch it up. And there we go. So we have this little plastic cover that hides the bolt. You slide it in through here first and then snap it in position. So now we wanna finish up getting our body panels back together. With these body panels, you just wanna make sure you don't force anything. So get your eyes in there as best you can to make sure that the clip is going in the hole and then a quick little pop gets them back in. We'll just take a double check and make sure our wire looks good and then we'll pop this one back in. Once you have this panel back connected, you could just put this little cover that hides the back of the tail light slide it in snap it in and then we can just get this other cover that is the access for the jack and the tools remember we pop this up so we got to push this back down okay that's all popped back down finally we have to get this grab hook back connected so we drop it in place here and then get our 10 millimeter bolt started i'm just going to cinch it up with the ratchet and then just pop this cover back over the bull head. And now that's back to connect it. So a moment of truth for this backup camera relocation. Let's see when he puts it in reverse if we get a camera. And look at that. That's my very unorganized garage. All right, we're all done with this job. We just showed you how to relocate your backup camera on your fifth gen 4Runner. It's fairly time consuming to run the wiring from your swing out where your camera is now, underneath the rig, through a couple grommet holes, along the driver's side of the cargo area, up into the headliner, through the grommet that leads to the rear hatch, towards the passenger side of the rear hatch, and then back towards the rear speaker and that last run is the hardest one it's going to be a test of patience but you'll finally get it there's really nothing technical about this job you just have to be able to run all the wiring and have the patience to do it with all that said we thank you for watching toyota time with timmy the tool man and sean and special guest garrett thank you for watching thank you for subscribing if you have any questions or comments do that below take care bye bye Sick mods and sick aftermarket bumpers.